David Brewster here, new episode of Court Play, and this is the 200th episode special. And while I'm sitting here making this episode, I can't believe Late Night Lessons has been here for three years, and this is the 200th episode of Court Play. That's awesome. And for a lot of you out there, you may not realize that this channel almost didn't exist. I've mentioned that in other episodes that were kind of anniversary episodes in the past. But it's true. I almost didn't do this because I wasn't sure if I was actually going to get anywhere. But I do want to thank everybody for the continued, you know, likes and views and feedback and requests and the Patreon supporters and just the energy that's floating around this channel. There's a lot of happy people thanking me. It sounds like you're inspired. I'm hooking you up with some different bands or guitarists or licks or chords or whatever. And that's very infectious because I see your enthusiasm and energy and excitement. And then that inspires me to keep going, you know, and make some new lessons. So this episode's going to definitely celebrate, you know, chord play. But we're going to revisit and kind of review some things, and I know some people out there don't like reviewing or revisiting, but we're going to try to push forward and make some progress, so there's a reason why I'm putting this together this way. So we are going to hit some things that we've seen in the past, and we're going to push forward, hopefully, you know, breaking into some new things, too. So here we go. So I know I mentioned this in another episode, it might have been the 100th episode of Chord Play, but Chord Play is a lesson series that I've had and used with private lesson students since 2004, that's when that originally kind of popped up in my, you know, lesson material. And if you've ever taken private lesson, you know, lessons from me, um, you know, over the last 18 years, we probably worked on this lesson together, because I know I've given this to, you know, hundreds of different students, you know, over the last 18 years. But when I put this channel together, chord play was pretty popular with my students, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to turn this into a, a show, you know, and that's basically, you know, what I did. But here's an image showing like the original chord play lesson from 2004. And like I said, if you ever study with me, you know, in private lessons, you're probably going to recognize the sheet. So what is chord play? And I've noticed, you know, in the comment section and some messages I've received, you know, some head scratching from viewers trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing with the series. So this is not a note for note transcription service. I'm not trying to show you complete songs or anything like that. There are thousands of other avenues you can explore if you need a you know, transcription of a song or you're learning a full song. And there's definitely a time and a place for that. Like if you're you know, covering a song on an album or maybe you're working with a band and you're covering you know, somebody's music, there's definitely a time and a place to learn somebody else's song and perform it you know, note for note. That's very important. But that's not what I'm doing here. Uh, I am exposing, you know, viewers to different players and bands and songs, and hopefully albums that, you know, those songs appear on. But we're just kind of casually just diving in. Like, think of it like a swimming pool. We're diving into the Led Zeppelin swimming pool or, you know, Radiohead or Van Halen or Pink Floyd or Dream Theater or whoever it is, Buckethead. We're diving into their swimming pool and just kind of checking things out. You know, checking out the water, you know, checking out the chords things that they like to do, you know, in their music. And then we're pulling those interesting things. So you may have noticed I don't really focus a lot on just straight power chords or simple, you know, major or minor, you know, triads or bar chords and stuff like that. I'm usually focused more on unusual or interesting or just something different, you know, like a different, you know, way of putting chords together, a riff, you know, a chord progression, whatever it is. And I'm really just trying to, you know, throw some ideas out there, hopefully sparking some creative, you know, spirit or energy in you and maybe exposing you to a band or a song you haven't heard before, maybe something you've never learned or played before, and really just kind of, you know, giving you that spark that might lead to either you're going to dive into the whole album, you're going to learn the entire song, or maybe you're just going to kind of pick and choose these little parts and chords and pieces and stuff and put them into your own music. Let me show you what I mean. So we're actually going to walk through the original chord play lesson, like that image I flashed earlier. I'm going to walk through, you know, what was featured in that lesson so you can kind of see the beginning of chord play and understand maybe a little bit more as far as, you know, what you can do with some of these chords and ideas. So it starts with A sus2, and sus chords are neutral. They're not major, they're not minor. They fall somewhere in between, you know, major and minor. So if we're, you know, thinking of A sus2, which is right here, A minor, but we're getting rid of the third and replacing that note with the second, which in the key of A is the note B. And that's that open B string right there. That's the sus2. Okay, so there's A sus2. So take the 
inverted part and move to the fifth fret and then play that. That's an A minor nine now. A really interesting, kind of mysterious sounding chord. Now move up a half step and now you're playing A major nine. Step, and now you're basically playing an A9 sus4. Like Move to the ninth fret, and now you're actually playing A sus2 again. You know, basically we've got A, the open B, and that open high E, and you're also fretting B and E. So we're just doubling the two open strings. So that's why it's still A sus2 right there. Up a half step, and this is a very unusual chord. So, this is an A minor 9 flat 6. You know, kind of moody, and then move up a whole step to the 12th fret, and now that's an A9 sus4 again. And then move up a whole step again, and there's A sus2, you know, an octave higher than where we started. Just started with one chord and then just started mapping the fretboard and finding all these you know alternatives and variations and mutations of a sus2 so that's the first step of kind of approaching chords with this chord play you know kind of mindset so let's kick this chord play concept up into second gear and we're going to move you know, basically from a sus2 we're going to mutate that chord or change it so i want to change the root a everything else the same but I'm going to change the root to F sharp right there now the easy way you could think of that as an A sus 2 over F sharp but I don't want to think of it that way I want to think of it related to that F sharp right there so that's going to be an F sharp minor 7 add 11 you know if we're thinking of the root being F sharp but notice how it changed the sound of that A sus 2 chord whole step and that's going to be a G sharp minor 7 flat 13 right here you know the same fingering but a brand new chord now take that fingering move it up a half step and now you're playing an A minor 7 add 9 this middle ground we had earlier with a sus2 because it doesn't sound good with that b flat or a sharp you know root let's just go ahead and skip to that b right there b minor 7 add 11 you know, something like that now one thing i like to do when i'm you know kind of doing this chord search and just moving chords around i like to find you know normal chords using these unusual you know fingerings and note arrangements so if you take that uh, well, we have B minor 7 at 11. If you take that chord and move it up a whole step, now you're just playing C sharp minor 7, which is kind of a normal chord. But a very unusual, you know, fingering and arrangement there, that voicing's different. But I like that, you know, discovering different ways of playing chords. Now take that, move it up a whole step, and now we're going to play a D sharp minor 7 flat 9 flat 13, which is a mouthful. D sharp minor 7 flat 9 flat 13. Now move up a half step and now you're just playing E minor 7. So there's another kind of seemingly normal chord. Now regular old E minor 7. And then move up a half step, or I'm sorry, a whole step, and you're back where we started an octave higher, but that F sharp minor 7 at 11. Again, we took you know the original concept with a sus2 and changed one note and radically came up with some different you know chord alternatives and mutations from that original starting chord so here's a variation of that concept or idea and we're going to start with something very basic and find some variations and mutations on the neck and then we're going to move into an actual song example for even more variations and alterations here so we're going to target C major first, just a regular stock C major down here. Okay, very, very, you know, common and very popular chord. 
also kind of boring because it's just regular C major, but we're going to fix that. We're going to change it into something you know, really unusual and different. So take that chord and move it up a whole step, and this is a very popular chord. You can find songs from Pink Floyd and Def Leppard and a whole bunch of different people with this. And it's basically a D11 add 9. to just boring old C major right there. Now take that fingering and now we're going to move up here where your third finger is on the eighth fret and now that's an F major nine. And a really interesting chord there. Now take that move it up a whole step and now that's just a G6 right there. Up and now that's A7, just a boring old A7, but a really interesting fingering and voicing of it. And if you move all the way up here where you're on the uh, 15th fret there with your third finger, we're back at C major again, but an octave higher than where we started. Okay, so that's the first step in kind of finding some of these, you know, mutated chords. In the song example that's going to borrow the C major, you know, movable chord shape or this chord play movement is uh, the instrumental section, The Worm, from Yes's uh, Starship Trooper, you know, a classic prog rock, you know, moment. And in that song, you're going to hear this really quiet part like this. fan or a prog rock fan but it actually starts right here so you can see that C major chord we're also grabbing you know, that D note there on the top so that's actually G major right there lo and behold no way but that's G major and we're moving down to where the third fingers on the uh, sixth fret right there and believe it or not that's E flat major no way right there and we're holding that G and that's just C major but a variation of the regular you know version with the open string and it has that G on top instead of the high E like that so that's the first pass just those you know kind of mutant chords G E flat to C do a nice little twist here another variation or mutation for these chords so he, instead of grabbing the root there G he actually starts moving over to the fifth right there so you're switching the root for the fifth so now that's G over D right there and then when you move down to that E flat you're actually playing B flat in the bass right there We're actually playing C over G right there. And I love that little subtle twist in those chords. And moving to that. And that's definitely a great example of chord play. I mean, I have no idea how Steve Howe, you know, sat down and wrote that. But I'm guessing he just started playing around with those chords and found that progression. And the next thing you knew, the, the worm took, you know, took shape. So here's another movable chord shape that produces all of these great you know, variations and mutations of these chords. And we're going to start right here. You know, very popular. That actually appears in lots of songs. And you can kind of think of that related to E major. And we're just kind of moving that up and we're grabbing that F sharp you know, for the root open strings, you know, up on top, which is so cool. So that's an F sharp 7 at 11. F sharp 7 at 11. Now we're going to take that and move it up a half step, and that's a G6 right there. Move it up a whole step, and now 
now you're playing an A add nine. Take that, move it up a whole step, now you're playing a B add 11. Move that up a half step, and that's C major seven waiting right there. Move that up a whole step, and that's a D six nine right here. Up, there's E major waiting right there. And then up a whole step and you're back to that F sharp uh, 7 at 11. But obviously an octave higher than where we started. And there are tons of songs and examples of using these chords. You could think of Rooster from Alice in Chains. There's F major changing to that F sharp, or I'm sorry, F sharp major changing to F sharp 7 at 11. And then A major changing to that A add 9. You know, even uh, little guitars from Van Halen, you can hear Eddie getting in on this, and he's playing with that D6 9, but he's doing it like that, just like a stock, you know, E major. middle part of that chord. You know, really stuff. When you hear this chord, you might think of something different than me, but the, the song I just rings in my head. You know, as soon as I start thinking about those chords, I just think of Xanadu by Rush. And of course, I'm a huge Rush fan and a prog rock nerd. So of course my brain and my ear is going to go there when I hear that. But really, if you want to investigate these chords, just sit down and learn, you know, Xanadu. And you can see Alex, you know, Lifeson is playing these kind of chords all over the place. And you'll hear that shift from E major into that uh, F sharp 7, you know, at 11. Add 11, and there's that A add 9. Right? So, uh, like I said, if you want to really investigate those chords, check out Xanadu, and really a lot of Rush music features, you know, tons of chord play. You know, Alex Lifeson's kind of a master of, you know, playing with his chords. So, here's another example of using this chord play kind of approach to chords, and we're going to use Pink Floyd Shine on You Crazy Diamond as the example, and we featured this in other lessons on this channel, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with this. So when you hear that opening, you know, that very dreamy chord, right, very, you know, signature sound, I mean, that's totally shining on your crazy diamond, just hearing that, and that's all you need, and you know what that is, right, but that's a G minor 13 implied, so like the root note's hiding way down here. G minor 13. But during Shine On You Crazy Diamond, you actually hear the root note change, you know, from G. Sometimes you hear it as a B flat. Which, ooh, that's beautiful. You know, that's going to be an implied B flat 6 sharp 11. You know, I love chords that sound like that. Change that root note to C, and now that's a C 11. change the root to D, and that's a D minor 6, 9, add 11, which is crazy. It's also kind of hard to play because I just screwed that up. There we go. And we can keep going. You can find some really interesting chords just by changing the root. And there's G. You know, going back to G minor 13 right there. example of just moving, you know, a root note and really, you know, changing up the sound. We recycle that chord finger and we found a shine on a crazy diamond, but apply a different approach, you know, to, to variating that chord, you're going to come up with a whole bunch of additional chords. So instead of just changing the root note, 
let's relocate the fretted part and see what happens. And this is also a good example of just kind of flying blind, I guess you could think of it. Because a lot of times when I practice this stuff and work on, you know, chord play, I'm not really worried necessarily about what it is that I've discovered at first. I'm, I'm interested in finding something unusual or interesting or, you know, something that grabs my attention when I hear it. And it's like, oh man, that chord sounds awesome. And then maybe I'll search for another chord and pair it and then start making a chord progression. Next thing I know, I'm writing a song. And that's what I'm definitely, you know, recommending that you try to do. Just play with this stuff, you know, be free and experimental creative and use your imagination and everything. But, uh, you know, when you do this, there's that G minor 13. So let's just take the fretted part and let's not even worry about what the names of these chords are. Let's just play. Let's just play around like a kid in a sandbox or something. Move down here. And you can think of F as the root right there if you want to. And we're just playing, okay? We're not worried about identifying and grabbing a, you know, chord, you know, dictionary or whatever. Take that up and move it up a half step. It totally sounds like Alti Miola or something. something you like and if you don't know what it's called that's when you can sit there and try to define the chord okay what's the root and where's the third or the fifth if there is one and you can kind of pick away until you actually identify the chord the last example comes from dream theater and this is from erato mania which is from the album awake and there's a great part in the song that's kind of showing you almost like this kind of movable chord chord play but john petrucci is actually changing shape so this is a great example of you know, deviating from what we've locked onto up to this point, because, you know, before this, we found one chord and started moving it around the fretboard, but we didn't really change the fingering. We just locked onto that one shape. And there's tons to explore with that. But then this is taking chord shapes and these little fragments and stuff and mixing them together to create something else, like this. <laughs> as a G-sharp minor flat 6. Alright, and then you're moving to this. So that's an F-sharp, what, F-sharp 7 add 11 over A-sharp. You know, really unusual. Then move this uh, A-sharp to B, and that's just a B11 right here. And take that, move that up a whole step, and there's a uh, C-sharp minor 7. down the second fret right there and that's just E major or E or like an E5 I guess kind of a drone like E power chord and then right there we actually had part of this chord earlier but there's F sharp 7 at 11 and we're going back to this which that's uh what E over G sharp feels like this but we didn't play it there earlier but you know we had, we did share that fingering but now it's somewhere else like that so once again that's E over G sharp and then you're gonna basically move this up to where you've got this a um, F sharp what F sharp 7 at 11 over A sharp again
important, you can see, you know, now we're, we're moving chords and we're mutating them, but we're changing shapes. So we're not just locked onto one chord, we're, you know, uncovering lots of them right there. <laughs> episode of chord play with a 200th uh, episode special which once again I can't believe I've already hit 200 episodes here but uh, and three for all slowly starting to get up there too so I'll do something special for three for all too when we hit 200 episodes but I do want to thank everybody for the continued you know views and support messages comments requests the patreon supporters you know and a lot of the questions and, and feedback you know which I am way behind on my messages I do want to apologize about that this channel is about you and I realize I'm the one sitting here and talking endlessly and playing and putting this stuff together but really this is for you you know I'm not doing this to show off or try to impress anybody I'm literally trying to reach out there and help anybody that's watching you know my channel I want to help you like get better or understand music more or expose you to some different players or albums or songs or music that maybe you haven't heard before and just you know really shake things up because I, I hope this is shaking things up in your world because it's definitely shaking things up in my world I mean it's changed my entire you know practice routine and everything I was doing before I did this you know this has been shaking everything up I got a chance to you know explore and study some music and bands and, and guitarists that I've never really explored before which is great kind of opened my eyes, you know, to some different players and, and different things. And uh, it's really helped me kind of break, you know, some new ground or open some new doors. And hopefully that's what it's doing for you too, but it's helping me at the same time. So you can thank me all you want, but I do want to sit here and thank you because this is helping me kind of, you know, push into some new areas and, you know, kind of build my musicianship even more, which is awesome. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to that lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.